Hello, everyone. My name is Robert Gregory. I'm the CEO of the Australian Jewish Association. Days ago, a shocking incident occurred in Melbourne. A synagogue was targeted in an ugly protest because it was advertised as hosting an event with speakers from the Jewish state. The residents turned up to defend the synagogue. The anti-Semites were driven out. My guest today is an example of a phenomenon which is noticeable, very much noticeable since October 7, of grassroots activists leading many of the most meaningful actions in the Jewish community. Yaakov Travitz is a Melbourne Jew. He served in the IDF. He's back in Australia now. Yaakov's, Yaakov was involved in organizing the counter-protest. AJA shared a lot of footage from that night, and you'll see Yaakov in many images, proudly displaying the Australian and Israeli flags. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Mac. Good to be on with you guys and really appreciate all the work that you do for not just um, the Jewish community, but for Australia at large. Would you like to tell everyone what happened uh, this week at, in Caulfield? So it actually started a little before that. It started about uh, a week and a half, two weeks ago, where there was another event that they also were talking about, but did not show up to. Um and basically, they they they're going along this whole <clears throat> excuse me this whole um, um rampage of trying to block out anything to do with Zionism and trying to cause a differentiation and even a split between Zionism and Judaism, which, as you know, is one and the same. Unfortunately, they're being followed by a couple uh, of of the as a Jew Jews people who are a very small minority who are against the state of Israel and they're advocating for the same people who were happy to see October 7 happen. And they're using that as the legitimacy to now come after us in our own neighborhoods at our events, not something that's being held in the city or for the public at large. It's our own events for our own community. And they're coming after us and we're just saying, no, that's not going to happen. So what happened was there was, they had an organized protest for a specific event where we had, um, I believe four or five speakers from Israel in all kinds of different positions. One of whom was canceled by the government in a very, uh, controversial manner. Um, and so they planned to come down to our area. Now, me and my grassroots group, we have our own intel going on and we heard of it and we followed up on, on certain leads, uh, which was a bit not full, um, to say the least. We didn't have the exact terms of who and who wasn't coming, but what we did know that was that they were saying they were coming. For certain reasons I can't really talk about here, they did decide to cancel it. At least that's what they were saying on some of their social media posts. We didn't believe them because as, historic, as history has shown us, they've canceled other ones and still rocked up. So we decided, well, if they're going to come to us, well, we're going to stand up and say no. One of the big messages, one of the main messages is saying, if you come to us, there is a resistance. And we will hold back. We will defend our own neighborhoods, our homes, and our safety. We're not coming after you. We're protecting our own. And that's a message that should be that should be sent out far and wide all over the world to all the Jewish communities who are at risk. When you stand up and you stand together, there's nothing and no one that can stand on top of us. It's an important message. And yeah, we saw that fact that that is what happened in Caulfield. Um, they didn't succeed in causing major problems there. The neighborhood turned up, very inspiring images, singing the national anthem as um, there were, you know, a few anti-Semites were taken away. I wanted to ask, did you, I mean, there's a lot of organizations in, in Melbourne, in Australia, did you receive much support from any of the larger Jewish organizations? Quite the opposite. There were many that were trying to shut me down. Really? Wow. Um, so do you want to maybe speak more generally since October 7, I, I said uh, we've had this phenomenon of grassroots 
activists who've been leading many of the most meaningful um, actions across Australia in defense of the Jewish community in Israel. Uh, what, what's that been like? Um, how did it happen? How did everyone get together, these groups? I believe that the community as a whole, every person in our community, um, is a proud and a strong Jew. And they want to be able to raise their voice and to do for what they believe in. Um, however, there are some, there is a minority amongst that larger uh, community who have stepped up in a major way, giving up time, um, mental health, their own personal money, putting everything on the line to do their to do their best. Not just everybody doing their bit, but going far beyond doing their bit to actually do their best to bring about a change and make a difference both for our community in in melbourne and in australia as well as overseas for israel um it's a hard it's a hard uh, battle because we're not funded we're not recognized in the majority and we have criticism so even from within However, we might not succeed in eight out of ten, but that one time we do, like that, like a couple nights ago, that's what makes it worth it. That's when we see the true feeling, the true spirit of our community come out. So no matter how many times you get knocked down, it doesn't matter as long as you get back up. Very true and beautiful to see. Um, we've seen lately, since October 7, uh, under the Labour government, there's been a surge of anti-Jewish attacks across Australia. Uh, one of the most recent ones was in Melbourne, the targeting of a Chabad house in St Kilda with disgraceful anti-Semitic graffiti, talking about Jews kill babies or kill children, uh, horrible things. But the story has a, a positive twist as well. Could you share that with us? So that happened, um, I believe it was, Yesterday, Wednesday, er, either early morning or Tuesday late at night. Um, the rabbi is away in America on a rabbinical conference and his wife and children were there on their own. Um, these are amazing people who use their house as a Chabad house, which welcomes in anyone and everyone and gives uh, uh, religious discussions on, on uh, religious law and holidays and those sort of things. Um, so they they had a, a group of people from, from the looks of it um, that have come and attacked the place with all different kinds of graffiti, the house, the car. And it was when she was there alone with her kids. So I really, my heart went out to her. Um, as soon as I heard about it, I went down there asked if I could help in any in any way possible, cleaned off some of the graffiti myself and then got somebody else to come in uh, more professionally and get rid of everything. Um, I noticed that they were lacking in a certain area of security. I'm not going to say what. Um, and that's where I reached out to the community at large and less than an hour, I already had amazing offers of uh, sponsors as well as other help in order to get um, to get them the security that they need at the place. So that's coming together, and I'm going to make sure that that comes about as soon as possible. Amazing. Well, that's so good to hear. People like you that are making all the difference there, and we should also mention um, the person who cleaned off the graffiti, who's uh, done a lot of cleaning off graffiti across Melbourne. Um, should we give, give a shout-out to his uh, company? I'm not sure of his company name. And I'm not really comfortable giving names without asking permission first, but he's amazing and he's been doing amazing effort um going all over the all over Melbourne. Um whether it's uh with a, a pressure pressure hose or or special uh, chemical um cleaning items to, to get rid of the graffiti. And uh, he does it in the daytime, in the middle of the night. Amazing work. Amazing. Another example of you know, grassroots, I mean, people shouldn't have to be doing this themselves. The authorities, large organizations, you know, there's people at councils that should be taking care of this. But the fact is uh, people do have to do it themselves. And it's amazing to see people step up and, and do it. 
Oh, hundred percent. And that's where, see, that's why I want to touch on to something that you were getting on. So the government, the labor government is not standing by us. In some cases, like last night, uh, like uh, two nights ago, sorry, the, the police were amazing. They came, they were helping us, um, helping uh, keep us secure and to um, move on the, the protesters who were just there to cause trouble. Um, I'll touch something. I'll touch on something connected with that soon. Um, and, but in in large, the over the recent history, ever since October seventh, the police have not been by us. In fact, they've been the opposite. They've been happy to move the Jew on because he's the easy guy to move on. He's the he's the guy who listens and obeys. So when we have a government like that and a police force like that they're not giving us any other option other than to stand up for ourselves. And if that's what we have to do in order to protect ourselves and stay safe, then that's what we're going to have to do. It's not something we want to do. It's definitely not something we want to have to do, but if we have to, we will. Now, what I wanted to allude, to get to with the, with what happened at the protest was um, interesting thing that I think uh, should be pointed out is that on at least one of their social media posts, they actually knew that the event had been moved from from uh, Caulfield Synagogue over to another uh, synagogue. I'm not sure. What I don't know is whether they found out where it was being moved to, but they do know it was moved. Yet they still came to the Caulfield Synagogue. So them using the excuse of coming to rally and protest outside a Zionist Israeli event, there was no event then. They knew it. So what were they coming for? Very good question. Coming to protest at a synagogue in the heart of Melbourne's Jewish community. And this is, this never would have happened uh, even in recent times. So it's a terrible what's happening to social cohesion in Australia. And as you alluded to the government and the authorities, when they send a weak message that filters down to the general public and you know, the words of politicians of of leaders have consequences and unfortunately the jewish community is bearing the brunt 100 percent. now let's look at what happened after that at the uh chabad house in st kilda where we we didn't see at, at the protest we were seeing them saying oh we're not anti, we're not anti-semites we're anti-zionists yet the next day or the day after that was when the St. Kilda Chabad house was attacked and it was pretty obvious and blatant. It said, Jews are baby kills, not Zionists, Jews. Free Gaza, free this, free that. That was on a, on a Jewish Chabad house. Chabad houses are not particularly uh, affiliated officially or in any special way to Zionist organizations or to Israel in anything other than the fact that they're Jewish. Yes, they believe in Judaism and and the majority of them believe in Zionism, but there's no specific affiliation between them. So I think that we can see it pretty clearly who they're coming after. They say it themselves, they said it themselves when they were when they wrote Jews. They didn't write Zionists. Yeah, the so, mark often slips off and yeah, we often see what they actually mean. Yeah, so we've got to give them we've got to give them credit where credit is due. At least they're being honest now instead of lying. Yeah. And I think there's a direct link between we see when politicians like Penny Wong and that when they don't stand up against the International Criminal Court making ridiculous accusations against uh, Israeli leaders, this leads to uh, these sort of, you know, false and defamatory accusations against the Jewish people. And it's important that everyone stands up against. A hundred percent. And I go back to my main message, which is that we can't rely on them to protect us or to stand with us. I hope that what I'm going to say is going to be wrong in the future, but I believe in preparing for the worst and hoping for the best. I believe that it's not going to get better before it gets worse. So the only way that we're going to be able to get through this is together. When we stand together, when we stand proud, and when I say proud, I don't mean hidden and saying we're proud. I mean public, loud, proud, and public. Let them see our pride. Let them fear the fact that they that, that they can see that we don't fear them. It's an important message. Yaakov Travitz, thank you for joining the AJA today for 
for this interview and we wish you all success in in any future uh, endeavors you're engaged in you can see it's important work and the community should be coming to support what you what you do thank you very much and remember as always i'm yisrael chai the chazak